Today on the Star Trek Critic, Transfigurations. As usual, each episode is treated like a school project starting with 100 points, taking one point away for each error, and we will see what is left. Again, poor Jordi is having girl problems. He says, that's her. Worf says, which one, since all human women look alike to him? Jordi says, the one I struck out with six months ago. Worf gives Jordi love advice. Christy comes up and says, Hi Jordi, I'm a sure thing. And Jordi still screws up. Anytime a girl touches you like that, it means she likes you. And look, both Jordi and Christy lower their heads in frustration. It looks like Worf's got a lot of work ahead of him. When they walk down the hallway, it's really product placement for the Crayola Star Trek collection. Jordi performs Picard maneuver number one, and Worf is thinking, Maybe I should make my move on Christy. The first point is lost for not beaming down with protective gear. Another point lost, they should have checked the radiation before they beamed down. That's just poor planning. Look quick, John is missing part of his left arm. This is a unique device, but it's the only time she uses it. However, they also act like this technology can have side effects, so you really wouldn't see it that much. The side effect is Jordy got his mojo back. As you can see, his left arm is missing, and she mentions freezing the detached arm. She needs to design a virus to cure him. Isn't designing a virus in a lab a bad idea? So Jordy has to be checked out too, which means this technology is still pretty touchy. Of course, she has no problem creating a virus in a lab. One point lost for opening credits six minutes into the show, Jean-Luc does Picard maneuver number two. All they could salvage from the shuttle was the giant light bulb. Data says I number one. Dr. Crusher checks the value of her stock for selling viruses she created in the lab, and now we see her drinking on duty, just like Dr. McCoy. Here we go, they do mention limb refusion. They say it so quick, you really don't notice it. They finally let Jordy go. Just how long was he in there? Because he spent the entire time putting an arm back on. Jean-Luc notices cell regeneration too quick, like instantly, so at minus one point. Data and Jordy talk about work in 10 forward. Worf says, enough with the technobabble, let's drink. Christy waves. That's girl talk for, come here, I'm a sure thing. Jordy is so excited he does Picard maneuver number three and number four. This is how girls tell guys to ask them out. And it worked. Yes! Worf takes credit for the whole thing since he is the ship's greatest love instructor. According to the star date, about 8 hours have passed, but she says 36, so minus 1 point for star date mismatch. John Doe sings his favorite Celine Dion song. Now he quotes Clark Kent. Oh my. Another point lost for a star date mismatch. This means about 24 hours have passed since they landed on that planet and found John Doe. Another point lost for not bringing in ship's counselor Deanna Troy to find out the identity of John Doe. Isn't this a dental scanner in the background? Another point lost here for a timeline mismatch. If 30 days have passed, they've encountered the Borg and are at the episode Suddenly Human. Dr. Crusher has her own version of the Neural Neutralizer. Picard suggests synaptic induction to get his memory back. Have they ever considered asking Deanna Troy? Riker catches Geordi taking Christy Henshaw on a ride in his turbo shaft. She says, this is where I get off. I think she did. Jordy also mentions about a month has passed. Then he sings his favorite song from Oklahoma. Jordy performs Picard Maneuver number five, so it's time for a drink. We like to drink, 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 drink. As usual, the camera follows an extra before the main character comes in. And this time, it is Chief O'Brien. Chief O'Brien loses a point. He should have called for help from the holodeck and stayed there. An osteotractor is not a real thing. Yet. Will Wheaton says hi to his mom out in TV land. John Doe says sick bay can be a boring place. And Wesley says, yep, I've known that for 17 years now. John Doe cures Chief O'Brien and then blames it all on the third baseman. The Crushers have dinner together. Wesley says, I like John. Beverly says, I do too. Wesley says, Mom, I think you two should hook up. I've always wanted a baby sister. Beverly says, Wesley, Star Trek is a family show, not a make family show. Then Wesley says, Mom, you've been giggling like a teenager for the past month. I think you already did. One point lost for a single set of doors on the turbo lift. Jordy discovers the secrets of the alien light bulb, and then Data takes credit for it right in front of the captain. What an asshole. And minus one point for Data using a contraction. The next point is lost since they assume the computer knows which images they are talking about. 
which it does, but there is no evidence that this is a touchscreen. Jory does Picard maneuver number six. This is Picard maneuver number seven. Picard says, we found your home, but John Doe says, hell no, I'm not going back there. Picard mentions another three weeks are going to pass. They really should have placed this episode earlier in the season where it wouldn't overlap that big two-parter coming up next week. Look close, there is a glass on the counter by John. Extras are very important in Star Trek directing. The camera always has to follow one across the room to the stars. Extras cross again, and if you notice, Beverly and John didn't have to move their chairs. John Doe says, Beverly, you've done so much for me. I wish there was some way I could repay you. And Beverly says, well, now that you think about it, Wesley has been asking for a little sister. It happened again, and extra crosses until the camera gets to Worf. Worf isn't kidding by the long-range scanner. This ship is traveling almost a thousand times the speed of light, and it's still ten hours away. Pretty good scanners, don't you think? It is impossible to identify any ship traveling at a warp bubble that far away, so minus one point. Worf says I number two. John's contractions are coming closer and closer. He's about to go into labor. Beverly asks John if he's in pain, just like a doctor. Geordi is in charge of engineering, not the shuttle base. Somebody else should be there, so minus one point. One point lost for security waiting for Dr. Crusher to arrive. One point lost for John knowing how to operate the controls, and one point lost for them not cutting power to the controls. Controls. One point lost, the shuttle bay doesn't have its own elevator. Worf had to leave to go use a turbo lift. This angle isn't right. Worf would not be pushed away like that and just happened to fall over that rail. Minus one point. One point lost for the old main character dying and being magically healed trick. Worf's thinking, great, the directors like that so much they want me to fall again in two years. John Luke and John Doe practice their Who's on First routine. Picard sings his favorite Who song. If I was Dr. Crusher at this time, I would probably recommend John be put in a shuttlecraft and take off the ship in case he explodes. Jordy thanks John for giving him his mojo back. Deanna hasn't had any lines yet and the first thing that happens, John stands in front of her and now all she can see is his butt. Riker is so drunk he says he is Commander Sunad of Zalcon. Sunad says, hey, that was my line. Have you been drinking again? The Zalcons mean business. They intend to eliminate any non-conformists like the little socialists that they are. In the conference room, the stars are not moving, but here they are, so minus one point. Deanna's like, oh my gosh, I finally got a line to say in the show. One point lost for Deanna being in a cat suit. Worf says, I number three. Beverly and John Luke argue about the Prime Directive. Picard says, let's be friends. Sunad says, no, we don't want to be friends. We're the bad guys. Picard wants to make sure there is a valid reason to return John Doe. Sunad says, I'm sick of this crap. We're going to use our choking weapon. And you can see he signals to the crew to do something. So it's some type of weapon, not magical powers. John cures Beverly first, although I think he's trying to get a good feel too. Picard maneuver number eight and nine. One point lost here because Sunat's crew doesn't notice that he's gone. The secret is out. His species is going to transform into very powerful beings of light. Of course, the government was afraid of them. Shout out to this excellent old school effect. John was simply wearing a glowing suit that reflects light. No CGI was used in this scene. The Zalgorns head back home with their tail between their legs. Jean-Luc gives an ass-kissing ambassador quality line. John Doe says, thanks Beverly, the sex was good, but I don't think Wesley's going to have that little sister. And you never learn what John Doe's real name was. So who were the Zalcons? Patty Tipa was Nurse Temple. Her first name was Shirley. She has 60 screen credits including Ed Wood, Grey's Anatomy, and Average Joe. Julie Warner also has 60 screen credits. This is her second and final time on Trek. You can also see her on Dexter, Grey's Anatomy, and Flatliners. Charles Dennis was born in Toronto and was Canada's youngest theater critic. He has 60 screen credits and will be back on Enterprise. Mark Lamura has 45 screen credits, including Matlock and All My Children, but he left us early due to lung cancer. Transfigurations, an excellent show, but covered too much time and rolled over into other timelines, gets a score of 77. Now for the season 3 recap. Wesley creates a life form and doesn't get credit for it. Data gets the girl. Old people survive an attack. Spying on natives goes bad. Aliens try to kidnap a child. Geordi fools around on the holodeck. Romulans. Deanna falls for a player. Riker falls for a killer. More Romulans. I pissed off a lot of liberals on this one. Beverly gets kidnapped by terrorists. Q gets fired. The Star Trek meme show. Tasha gets the guy. Data gives birth. Worf's brother gets him deported, Picard dances with Beverly, Picard gets Jamaharoned, Tin Man, Barclay saves the ship, Data gets kidnapped, Picard and Sark become one, the Troys do a nude scene, and Alien transitions. It was hard to choose just three because season three was a really good season.
If you notice, the best of both worlds hasn't been mentioned. I will be combining all the two parters, and it makes more sense to me to have them as the first episodes of the next season. So be sure to leave comments below, click that like button, the share button, that subscribe button, and I will see you again with season four starting with the best of both worlds.